It's that time of year, Jim, when you start removing honey, when you start harvesting, when your whole year finally comes to a pail or bottles of honey. But there's a bigger question. How much of that honey should you leave on your hive to overwinter? And therein lies a whole bunch of questions. Therein lies a whole bunch of questions. Is it questions or guesses? <laughs> What's the difference between a question and a guess? <laughs> Well, when it, when it comes when it when it comes to honey and a honeybee colony, if you don't answer the questions right, you got a dead colony next spring. Yeah, that's the difference. Yep. Hi, I'm Kim Flottam, and I'm Jim Tew, and we're here today to talk about something that you need to think about long and hard right now, and that's how much honey do you leave on your colony to overwinter? You are listening to Honey Bee Obscura. Brought to you by Growing Planet Media, the folks behind Beekeeping Today podcast. Each week on Honey Bee Obscura, hosts Kim Flottam and Jim Tu explore the complexities, the beauty, the fun, and the challenges of managing honeybees in today's world. Get ready for an engaging discussion to delight and inform all beekeepers. If you're a long timer or just starting out, Sit back and enjoy the next several minutes as Kim and Jim explore all things honeybees. So how much do you leave, Jim? Now, you got a history of Alabama down south, and you got a history of Midwest and Ohio. I've got Midwest and up north. So we're going to talk about kind of all three parts of the country here. So we just have a long series of areas for possible mistakes, right? <laughs> <laughs> because it was it was always, you're right, in Alabama all those years ago and with the beekeeper friends I still have there. You know, that the, the honey flow is just like it is here, except it's different. Does that make sense? It does to me. Maybe not as intensive and maybe not quite as much honey produced, but... Probably, Kim, we left around 40 to 45 pounds of honey to, to overwinter if you had to if you had to get a weight of honey. You can go to you can go to 50 different beginners books if you right. can find that many. And yep. and if you kind of run all the numbers from all of them and come up with an average, the world will tell you that you just hit it right on for the south. About 40 to 45 pounds. Midwest oh, here. Good, good, good. Midwest here in Ohio, we're looking at 60 to 70 pounds I need to leave. And if you go up north like I did in Wisconsin, they're talking, you know, in Canada, they're talking 100 pounds that you need to leave on now so that you still have enough food on your colony next spring. There are things to consider here that you may want to bet on. You're going to have a fall flow. Are you going to come back and harvest more? You know, what, what's your management plan that will affect how much honey goes into winter on that colony? And developing that management plan, developing that experience is something you just acquire over time. Number one, you talk to your friends at meetings, you talk to beekeepers anywhere to get an idea of what the fall flow is. And then number two, you just keep bees two, three, five, 25 years and you get a notion that, well, it's going to really smell the backyard up, but I don't make a lot of goldenrod honey. That would be my synopsis right now. I will get a fall flow, but it won't mean much. Well, the, the other half of that question is, how much do you have now? I mean, when you, how much do you have so that you know how much to leave? And, and you get some, get some guesstimates, and I'll go back to those beginner's books. And on average, they tell me that a medium frame full of honey, capped both sides, weighs about has about five pounds of honey in it. It's got wax and wood and those other things, yeah. so it's going to weigh more. Yeah. And a full deep is going to weigh about seventy pound, have about seventy pounds of honey. So there's about seven pounds or so of honey per frame. Now here's a trick: if you run Nine, eight or nine frames in that 10 frame deep, that frame's going to have more honey, but you're going to have fewer frames. But you can stack more honey into a, you know, when you got more space between frames, they draw it out further and you can get, you can get eight, eight and a half, maybe even nine pounds in a, in a fully capped deep frame. So are your frames tight and smooth or are they fat and bulky? All of those things are beekeeper <laughs> options, aren't they? Yep, yep. 
Because I know where you're going. You haven't gotten there yet, but you're going to go to the eight-frame discussion because I understand you're an eight-frame beekeeper. So all of those same things you said apply to eight-frame equipment. Do you have seven frames in, or are you letting the bees draw the cappings or draw the combs out farther? So you end up getting probably the same amount of honey in fewer frames because they'll pull those combs out deeper. Much easier to uncap, I might add. What this boils down to is counting frames. How many medium frames do you have or how many deep frames do you have at so much weight per frame? And and do the math. It, it's, it takes longer, especially when it's 95 degrees out, but it's more accurate if you're counting frames. One of the things that I learned in Wisconsin from a longtime beekeeper is how much how much does this colony weigh? And he says, "Oh, you go back, you go out to your bee yard, grab the back, and heft it, and it weighs a lot, not very much, not hardly any at all. What? So, you know, you're guessing. Yep, yep, yep. You know that hefting thing. I got in trouble with that. At, actually, I got in trouble." At your organization there in Medina, Ohio, a hundred years ago, because the beekeepers began to argue amongst themselves that hefting was not accurate enough. Well, this was a you know it was a tempest in a beekeeping teapot. If you're a, if you're a healthy, strong person, it might feel different to you than if you're a more lightly built person. But I got to tell you, one way or the other, I heft all the time. When you were talking a bit ago about counting frames, yes, I'll count frames. But when I'm trying to move that deep around to see what is underneath that deep, I'm thinking, boy, this deep weighs 228 (laughs) pounds. It is full. This is a wintering supply right here. So just by being in that beehive, would you agree Counting frames, moving equipment around, hot bees flying everywhere, spring season's gone. You're going to quickly get an idea of how much honey is in is in that colony. Yeah, and and yes and no. Yes, I can take a look at that top super and I can see that every frame is capped. I got eight frames in there, so I know that that frame is going to have about five pounds of honey. So I got 40 pounds of honey in that eight frame capped Super. But then I take that off and I look down below and there's some frames that are capped and there's some frames with brood and there's some frames that aren't capped yet and there's frames that haven't even been drawn out. So then you begin to hedge. What do you, you know, and that's why I'm looking at frames. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I don't, I'm not saying don't look at frames. I'm not saying that at all. It's an estimation, it's your best guess. I, I I will say again, this is the second time, but just me personally, I don't really get a fall flow. They'll, they Something will happen, and there'll be a, that strong odor that Aster and Goldenrod does. And you think, boy, I should be putting on some more equipment. But if I go back there, I mean, it's barely, it's barely any nectar and new honey at all. So I, I have to admit, and have admitted now for decades, that that my, my wintering crop is already made. It's already on the bees back there right now. Yeah, that's, that is a safe, a safe way to approach this, I think. You're not going to guess that there's going to be a fall flow. And, and this year, in my part of Ohio, lots of things haven't bloomed that should have bloomed. And am I going to bet that goldenrod's going to be? I got, I got two and a half acres of goldenrod 100 yards from my, from my beehives, not even 150 yards from my beehives. And last year, I didn't make enough goldenrod honey to fill a cup, let alone supers. So guessing that you're going to make a fall flow is just that. It's a guess. So I think you're exactly right. I like your approach. All the honey that you're going to harvest has already been harvested, and everything that comes from now on is the bees. Yep. I was thinking while you were talking, what if you screw this up, Kim? What if you get really eager and you think, I'm going to take this super, I'm taking this super, and I'm taking these two supers, and this is going to be a good honey crop for me this year. And then in September, you realize this colony is really light. If I heft or whatever, can you can you apologize to that colony and <laughs> and give it liquid honey back? And that's another segment for another time. 
if I if I miscalculate right now, and and this I'll go ahead and admit that it's early August right now, late July, early August. If I miscalculate now, can I give it back? Probably not readily. Not e- not easily. It's going to take a long time for the bees to retake that honey and put it somewhere else back in the colony. And I think I think you hit it exactly right. This is for next time or the time after, but how do you feed liquid honey back to bees? And therein lies, you know, several answers to another question. But uh, I'll go back to, I'd rather have them have 10 extra pounds that they need than me have to feed back 20 pounds somehow. This is where I was going with this. If I'm standing there saying, hmm, there's some frames here. Uh, should I take this or not? If I have to ask that question, then that means it stays. If I'm uncertain, that means it stays because I'd rather have the bees survive the winter and have bees next spring than I had to have maybe the four or five, six pounds of honey that I'm considering right then. Hang on to that thought because I got something to add to that, but let's give our sponsor a break here. Looking forward to reaping the benefits of your hard work by harvesting honey? Sure you are, but getting the process started can be daunting. That's why Better Bee is here to help. And we've teamed up with our friends over at Bee Smart Designs to offer a beginner's extracting kit. Especially for you, because you listen to this podcast, you'll get 30% off regular pricing, but only through August 30th, 2022. Go now and order your kit. It includes our two-frame plastic extractor, the Bee Smart Designs on Capper combo, a plastic honey sieve, and a five-gallon pail with a honey gate. So visit betterbee.com slash begin to make extracting easy. Okay. Well, then you know what it comes down to. I like your. I like that. If if you have to guess, guess in favor of the bees. If if you're if you're counting frames and you know how much honey you got and how much you need to leave, it's forty pounds in the south, sixty pounds in the Midwest, and a hundred pounds up north. Leave that much, and you're not going to have. You probably never have a problem wintering, yep. food wise, wintering. And I don't think we're that we're repeating or that I'm repeating what you've already said, but there are ways to estimate how much honey that is. And I don't want to keep talking about some future segment. That would be the wrong thing to do, I guess. But there's all kinds of scales. I don't have any of them. Kim, do you have any scales for weighing beehives in your yard? Actually, I do. And oh. it, it, <laughs> it took me a while to figure this out, but you know what a handheld spring scale is. Yeah. Using one of those. What you need to develop is your standards to start with before, but but how much does your beehive weigh next spring? You take that handheld hive out or handheld scale out and you lift it up and you lift the back of it just off the platform and then you lift the front of it just off the platform and you add the two numbers together and you have the weight of two, you know, however you overwintered two deeps or three mediums and that's your baseline. And if you're using two deeps, you're looking at somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 to 125 pounds in the spring. Is this handheld scale, is that a B device or is that just a scale that you buy at any hardware store? Any hardware store. It's if you've got a lip, you got a hook on one end and a handle on the other and the scale in between, that's all you need. You can adjust, you can add a rope to the handle uh, like that. But that's what, I've, that's what I've been using for 40 years. Well, you need to stop talking because this needs to be a future segment that we discuss completely because there's other scale devices. And I've got beekeeper friends who refer to their scale weights, predicting swarming, predicting nectar flow, stopping and starting. So this is a good topic for some other time. But there are ways, Kim, this is where I got off the subject. There are ways to get a good solid number, estimates, of how much honey you're leaving. Because if other beekeepers are like I am, I always anguish. I'm standing there sweating, stung, sticky, trying to make decisions about when the wind is howling and the snow is piled up against the colony. I'm trying to envision that colony under a completely different seasonal situation. And it's not easy to do, you know. I stand there, I stand there uncertain every year, every time. I always have. So I'd like to say I think that uncertainty is a part of the estimation process. Now go ahead. 
argue with me. <laughs> no, I'm not going to argue with you because you're you're exactly right. It's a guess, and and you can add throw in all of the all of the factors to this formula that you want. You can come out with really bad guesses or really good guesses. But if you've done your homework and you know how much you how you know what you're working with, the chances are your bees are going to be okay. But you got to know you can't guess. Yep. The chances are, you know, the chances are, the guesses are, the estimations are. This has just been weasel worded the whole way through this last 15 minutes, hasn't it? Because we haven't even discussed what else is going on. I mean, what's the Varroa population? Did you did you control the Varroa? What's the health of the bees that you're putting? So just leaving 40 pounds of honey in Alabama and 70 pounds in here in Ohio, that solves the honey part of the equation, but there's other elements to this overall picture on the status of that colony, what kind of wind breaks you got, is there going to be a raccoon there all winter harassing the colony? Everything's a variable, isn't it? Everything. Absolutely everything. I think I think maybe we need to stop adding variables and 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 leave it at how much honey do you leave right now? I was going to ask you to give those numbers one more time as though people weren't listening. You said in Alabama, 40 to 50 pounds. Yep. Go ahead. And the Midwest, and, and the Midwest is sort of above the, the Mason-Dixon line, I think, uh, up to, up to uh, Lake Superior, that area. In the Midwest, you're looking at, in the Midwest, you're looking at 60 to 70 pounds. And above that Lake Superior area into Canada, they're looking at a hundred pounds. You need to leave. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how we can leave this guessing situation any better than that. Those yeah. are the best numbers we can give. Those are the best guesses we can give. Keep your bees healthy. Roughly leave that much honey, and then see what you got next spring. Yep, and learn from your mistakes. What would you <laughs> learn? What in the world <laughs> would you learn? <laughs> Leave more honey? <laughs> well, I got to quit. We got to quit. We got to quit. <laughs> all right. Well, all right. you know, you, what you mentioned is is uh, make sure your colony is healthy, and we need to talk about that, getting rid of mites and and how and when and what to use sort of, yeah. sort of approach. You know, I, so, I know you said mites, but it sounded like you said mice, <laughs> M-I-C-E, because... Yep. They're in the mix, too. I mean, they can be just as disruptive as mites. And then we're off the subject again, or at least yeah. I am. Hey, if you've listened to this point, listeners, you know we always appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. And uh, know how much honey you've got and how much you need to leave. And we'll talk to you next time. Thank you. <laughs>